First, you don't need a fancy introduction or elegant transition between shots. And you don't need to do the whole tell them what you will tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them routine for YouTube. People will simply re-watch your video if they want to hear your message again. On YouTube, people are looking for videos that are short and to the point. Yes, they may want to be entertained a little, but trying to make some fancy intro and outro and transitions is more likely to make you look less professional since, guess what, you're not a video editing professional. Stick to your area of expertise and keep the rest simple. Second, you can make quick cuts like I just did there, even from one location to another. Again, it's about what you are saying in the moment, not about your editing skills. If you look at some of the most popular YouTubers, they use quick cuts quite generously. Third, audio is more important than video. People can put up with quality issues in your video from time to time, but bad audio makes your content very skippable. Audio that is too low means that it takes more effort to watch your video. Audio with artifacts or that is overdriven is very distracting. I looked at what other content creators were using and settled on a nice inexpensive mic from Rode that works well with my iPhone and my camera. I'll put a link to that Rode microphone in the video description below. Fourth, you can do a lot with free programs like iMovie and there are lots of hacks to get around its limitations without having to spend money or learn more complex programs. For example, iMovie will not let you have multiple picture in a pictures but you can use a PowerPoint slide with a green background and the green screen option to get the same effect. There are lots of hacks out there and a simple Google search will help you find what others have hacked together. Fifth, reading from a script is not bad. Recording a YouTube video is different than talking to a class. There's no one else in the room. It's easy to let yourself get off topic to start having a lot of ums and ahms in your speech and to ramble on a bit. A script keeps you to the topic and helps you make sure you make your points. I've started using a cheap teleprompter that uses an iPad to help me read my script. I'm using it right now. I'll link to that below in the video description as well. Sixth, be true to the mantra of done is better than perfect. Now that is not a common idea in academic work where we try to perfect our work before submitting for review perfect it again, perfect it again before it actually gets published. Instead, try an idea, publish it, solicit feedback where appropriate, and then look at the data. The great thing about YouTube is that you can run experiments and see what works and what doesn't work. You have to decide what goals are important for you, but you can get a lot of great data from YouTube about what is resonating. It really gives you a new type of academic freedom to create, delete, and remix your content. One last piece of advice. Be a true content creator. Learn how to make the video, edit the video, and publish the video. It's not easy, but it will help you understand the complexity of the process and develop some appreciation from these young people who have mastered this medium. Yes, it's frustrating at times. I think my first YouTube video took an entire day to figure out how to record, export, and upload correctly and I'm kind of a tech guy but now I know what I need to do. I'm sure I'm going to learn more soon and I'm going to be back to share when I have something worth sharing.